In this video, we're going to go over the concept of valency. What is valency? Valency is a number that describes the amount of electrons that an element would like to either accept or donate in order to form chemical bonds. So let's consider the first element, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron. And depending on what other element it binds to, it can either accept another electron or it can give away this electron. Either case, its valency is one. It can either accept one electron or give away that electron. The number of valence electrons that it has is one. Now let's look at another example, helium. Helium is a noble gas. It has two valence electrons. Helium is stable. It's inert. It doesn't participate in chemical reactions under standard conditions. And as a result, because it doesn't accept or donate electrons, its valency is zero. The other noble gases like neon and argon, they also have a valency of zero. They don't want to give away their electrons, nor do they want to acquire a new electrons. But now let's consider some other examples. What about magnesium? What is the valency of this element? Magnesium has 12 electrons. In the first shell, the first shell can only hold a maximum of two electrons. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons. And the third shell will contain the remaining two electrons. Now, what would you say is the valency of magnesium? Now, magnesium has two valence electrons because there are two electrons in its outermost energy level. And it's a metal. Metals like to lose electrons. They like to give away electrons. Non-metals prefer to acquire electrons. So magnesium has the potential to give away two electrons, so its valency is two. When magnesium gives away those two electrons, it's going to become the Mg2 plus ion, which is a cation. Now, what about fluorine? What is the valency of that element? Fluorine has a total of nine electrons. It has two electrons in the first shell, and in the second shell, it has seven electrons. So what would you say the valency of this element is? We know that the number of valence electrons is seven. There's seven electrons in the last energy level. But what about the valency? Now, fluorine wants to have eight electrons in order to satisfy its octet requirement. It wants to have the maximum number of electrons possible in the second shell. So in order to do that, it wants to acquire just one electron. And so its valency is one. Once fluorine acquires that one electron, it will turn into the fluoride ion. Nonmetals like fluorine and oxygen, they like to acquire electrons. And as we said before, metals, they like to give away electrons. So in the case of nonmetals, the number of valence electrons and its valency will be different. Now the valency, it tells you the number of bonds that an element likes to form. Fluorine, because it only wants to acquire one electron, it typically forms one bond. A good example is hydrofluoric acid or carbon tetrafluoride, CF4. In each of these molecules, each fluorine atom contains only one bond. Go ahead and try this one. Determine the number of valence electrons for the element oxygen and also its valency. Feel free to pause the video. So oxygen has a total of eight electrons. It's gonna have two in the first energy level and it's gonna have six in the second energy level. So because it has six electrons in its higher or its highest energy level, it has 
six valence electrons. Now what about the valency? Now oxygen wants to have eight electrons in its outermost energy level. In order to get to eight, it wants to acquire two electrons. Like fluorine, oxygen is a nonmetal. The nonmetals are on the right of the periodic table. The metals, you could find them on the left side of the periodic table. So because oxygen wants to acquire two valence electrons, it's going to have a valency of two. And once it gains those two electrons, it's going to turn into the oxide ion. Now, as we said before, the valency tells us the number of bonds that this element prefers to form when making a chemical compound. So think of water. In water, oxygen has two bonds. Another molecule is carbon dioxide. This is the structure of carbon dioxide. Each oxygen atom, as you can see, has two bonds. So oxygen likes to form two bonds because its valency is two. Now, here's a challenge problem for you. What is the valency of the element sulfur? This is one of those special cases because sulfur is in the third row. Oxygen is in the second row. The elements in the third row can do some interesting things. So let's consider sulfur. Sulfur has 16 valence electrons. So let's draw a picture. It's a third row element, so we are going to need three energy levels. In the first energy level, as always, it's going to have two electrons. In the second energy level, it's going to have eight electrons, so that's a total of 10. We need to get up to 16, so we need six more in the last energy level. So because there are six electrons in the outermost energy level, sulfur has six valence electrons. Now what about the valency? Would you say it's six or something else? Now sulfur can do two things. In order to become stable, sulfur can acquire two more electrons to have eight in its outermost energy level, or it can give away the six electrons that it has. Now it really depends on the type of element that sulfur is bonded to. If sulfur binds to an element that is more electronegative than itself, sulfur will want to give up electrons to that more electronegative element. So in that case, sulfur can give up to six electrons. So its valency can be six. On the other hand, if sulfur binds to an element that is less electronegative than itself, sulfur is not going to want to give up those six electrons. Rather, sulfur is going to take two more electrons to get to eight. So in that case, its valency will be two. So in this case, sulfur can either give up or acquire more electrons, depending on what type of element it's attached to. So let's look at these three elements, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1. Sulfur, is, its en value is 2.5. And for oxygen, the electronegativity value is 3.5. So sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. When attached to hydrogen, it's going to want to acquire electrons because it's more electronegative than that element. A good example is H2S, hydrosulfuric acid. When you draw this molecule, notice that sulfur has two bonds. It's pulling the two electrons provided by the two hydrogen atoms. So in that structure, the valency is two because sulfur forms two bonds. Now, another case when sulfur is attached to oxygen, this would be like sulfuric acid, H2SO4. In this structure, we have sulfur forming six bonds because the oxygen atoms are pulling the electrons away from sulfur. They can pull up to six electrons away from it. So thus we see that 
sulfur has a valency of 6 in this chemical compound. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped you to understand the concept of a valency. Now for those of you who want more chemistry videos, uh, you can go to my channel, check out my, uh, my new chemistry playlist. I do have two of them, an older one and a newer updated version. So feel free to take a look at that if you want more video topics on chemistry. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell.